Hello there, my name is Alex Leff. I am an NIHR research professor working at UCL Queen Square Institute of Neurology. The most pressing problem for stroke survivors today is that they don't get a big enough dose of guided, practice-based therapy to help their recovery. One way to achieve this is by using intelligent apps that guide patients through a series of practice-based challenges. This approach is very specific, which means that patients tend to only get better at the things that they practice on. My team have been particularly focused on developing apps for people with aphasia. Aphasia is a disorder of language that has a major impact on people's lives and affects about one in three of those hospitalized with a stroke. Speech production, understanding what people are saying, reading and writing are all often affected together and each needs addressing with specific practice. We develop these apps in three stages. First, we create the app with the research team, software developers and patient users all working together to produce something that stroke survivors are keen to use on a regular basis. Then, we test the app in a clinical trial. Lastly, and this has been the most challenging, we release the app into the real world but continue to collect data to see if it is working at scale. One such app that has been through these phases and has just been released is designed to help aphasic patients improve their ability to read. It is called iReadMore. The iReadMore app is designed to improve single word reading at home at your own pace. It uses repeated pairings of written words, spoken words and pictures to train up reading. It's taken us about 14 years of research and development to get iReadMore ready and it's now available to download through the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. It contains a number of smart features that adapt the difficulty level to each user's specific reading abilities. This means the therapy continues to be challenging, but without becoming so difficult that it's frustrating for users. The app has also been gamified and co-designed by people with aphasia to make sure that it's both engaging and easy to use. Our research has shown that the iReadMore app can significantly improve reading speed and accuracy after just four weeks of daily practice. Now that the app is available, we are still going to continue to conduct research and develop the therapy further to make sure that it's as effective as possible. A more neglected consequence of aphasia is the loss of numerical processing, the understanding and use of spoken and written numbers, such as number identification, counting, and simple arithmetic. My name is Dr. Carolyn Bruce, and I'm a speech and language therapist who works with people with acquired communication difficulties. Numerical skills in aphasia are often overlooked, and this is partly because they're seen as less important than other cognitive skills. For many of us, it's un almost unthinkable to be unable to speak, read, or write. Being bad with numbers is more acceptable. Only recently, we've considered how frustrating poor numeracy can be in daily life. We came up with the idea of our digital game when we realised that counting skills for some adults with aphasia mirrored the early phases of counting in children and that improvements in number naming depended on multiple practice at linking the number word with the Arabic digit. Swan builds on the phases of counting identified by Fousson and exploits the success of the tile matching type games in engaging the user. So the user begins with sequences starting at one and going up then works with sequences that begin at any starting point before moving on to the number sequences that move forward or backwards. Hello, I'm Andrew Wilson. Most of the people call me Andy. About six years ago, I had a stroke. I couldn't speak at all. And this side was like that. And uh, you, you hear people saying, oh, you, after two years, you're not going to get it any better but I'm, I'm, I'm there to say no the uh, tablet at first I went oh, this is it's like a, a children's game but when I was started into it and I went oh I've, I've, it got me I have to do a sick set times every day and all that. To be honest, it does uh, keep, keeps me going. The apps and uh, the the uh, co college UCL, I don't know how to say how much they help me. Yeah. But, yeah. 
I'm not being funny. He's tough, big time. But to me, um, all over, I would say to anyone out there, had a stroke, don't give up. We're at the early stages of evaluating Swan, but findings so far show that people can and want to play the game independently. So the game nature of the app has been effective. Some people's numeracy skills significantly improved, but even when people didn't show a marked improvement on baseline tasks, some of them reported gains in confidence with numbers and others reported a more positive can-do attitude. Say it with me. A pa. Kat Gem and I believe that we all have a role to play in digital inclusion and that we can use our skills as a technology business to create potential solutions to societal issues. Advancements in technology are playing a key role in improving the rehabilitation of stroke survivors, giving the ability to augment how therapy is delivered. My name is Holly Brown and I initiated a project at Capgemini alongside a great team of data scientists and developers where we have created a prototype of an app called Speech First that uses AI to give feedback to users as they complete their therapy. It has been a particular passion project for me as my dad had a stroke many years ago and I am therefore aware how devastating a stroke can be and how crucial therapy can be for recovery. We know from our research that there are not enough solutions in the market today that meet the need for stroke survivors. Standard care provided by the NHS is not enough and private therapy can often be expensive and inaccessible for many. We don't believe that technology is the answer to all of these problems, however what we do believe is that AI powered applications can support the intensity and frequency of therapy, can augment how therapy is currently delivered and can provide a way for therapists and clinicians to track their patients' progress over time. Not only this, but investing in these machine learning technologies can also give stroke survivors the autonomy to complete their therapy outside of formal sessions, giving them increased independence, which is something that is often lost for many after their illness, but so important for their recovery journey. I do. I do. I'm Rosemary Barley, Professor of Acquired Language Disorders in the Division of Psychology and Language Sciences at UCL. I have long-standing interests in post-stroke aphasia rehabilitation. In particular, my research group designs and tests digital therapies. A current project funded by the Stroke Association is testing a new intervention for sentence processing impairments. I believe that digital therapies permit the high-dose intervention necessary to stimulate the reorganisation of a neurocognitive system damaged by stroke. They also give the person recovering from stroke autonomy in the delivery of therapy and reduce inequality in the provision of healthcare. People with aphasia and other post-stroke communicative impairments identify clear and intelligible speech as an important goal for recovery. In the development of digital therapies for word and sentence production, we need to work with expert coders and top technology companies to harness automatic speech recognition software that gives users fast and accurate feedback on speech accuracy. This is not a trivial challenge, for while the technology for recognising typical speech has rapidly advanced, the speech of people with neurodisability is atypical, with errors, non-fluences, length of pause and sound durations. Speech First is an example of how expert programmers at Capgemini collaborated with service users, clinicians and researchers to produce a new digital resource. After initial pilot testing, the effectiveness of Speech First in delivery of high-intensity therapy is now being explored in a collaboration between UCL and Capgemini. Patients and clinicians at the UCL Aphasia Clinic are trialling the software and we will learn of its effectiveness in improving speech intelligibility and its acceptability to patients. There are lots of people here at UCL and elsewhere working on therapy apps for patients who've had a stroke. I think one of the important points about having had a stroke and needing therapy is that you can continue to improve for many years and even decades afterwards. And most patients get most of their therapy on the NHS just in the first few months after their stroke. But what apps do is give them the chance to put them back in charge 
of their own therapy and they can choose at what pace, what intensity and when and where they can practice. And we've seen that patients can improve for many months, years and even decades after with this practice-based therapy.